Right, so this weekend saw another march in London, but this time it wasn't a pro-Palestinian one. It was supposedly a march against anti-Semitism. Definitely couldn't disagree with that sentiment in and of itself, but the sea of Israeli flags made us feel less about anti-Semitism and more about pushing back against the marches we've previously witnessed up and down the country for Palestine and for Gaza, and more about celebrating Israel instead. This was a show of people taking a side in what is happening in the Middle East, not so much a stance against racism. And when one of the key figures who turned up was a certain Stephen and Yaxley Lennon, preferring to be known as Tommy Robinson, the former leader and founder of the English Defence League, masquerading as a journalist, as it happened, it pretty much rubber stamps this as not being an anti-racist event, not an anti-Semitism march even. This was a pro-Zionist exercise, a who's who of siding with the oppressors and occupiers of Israel. Right, so I'm all for supporting the fight against anti-Semitism. The real thing, that is, of course. The genuine article. I would hope we all were. So long as all other forms of racism are treated as equally disgusting and called out wherever any of them are found. But of course we know that this isn't the case. We know anti-Semitism has been weaponized to death. The it was a scam. This has harmed the fight against the real thing and has led to other forms of racism, notably Islamophobia, being treated as somehow less important. So a march against anti-Semitism in and of itself isn't something that ought to be argued against, unless it ends up once more as an exercise in weaponising the issue. And in my opinion, that is exactly what we saw in London this weekend, gone unfortunately, whether that had been the original intention or not. If it was not, then unfortunately bad faith actors have turned it into one. If it was, then shame on you all. But given that the organisers were the discredited charity campaign against anti-Semitism, I'm firmly of the opinion it was the latter, especially when you consider Gideon Falter, the CEO of the campaign against anti-Semitism, is a board member of the Jewish National Fund, which raises money to help settlers illegally settle in the Palestinian occupied territories. It is also behind the rancid claim that the pro-Palestine marches turned London into a no-go area for Jews. Funny that, I could have sworn there were loads of them at those pro-Palestine marches. Perhaps they were just the wrong kind, though. When you go onto social media and you look at the images, it is a sea of Israeli flags. You can argue that their presence is just a nod to the Jewish faith via the Jewish state. But if you really want to stand up for human rights and against racism, then flying the flag of an occupying state embroiled in genocide of Gazan people right now, majority Muslim, but not exclusively so, that might not be the best way of standing against anti-Semitism right now, eh? In fact, there were so many Israeli flags, it could not be read as much more than a pro-Zionist march, whether that was the feeling of everyone who took part in that march or not. Put it this way, the BBC, whose reputation is mud on the issue of Israel and Gaza already, even they admitted that that march was as much a march in support of Israel as it was against anti-Semitism. So let's consider that point put to bed now. Who showed up to shill for Israel in that case then. Disgraced Labour MP who took a Tory peerage after destroying the safe seat of Dudley North for his party, Ian Austin, he was there. Tracy Ann Oberman was there, fresh from having attacked actor's agent James Foster on Twitter just in the last few days because somebody he didn't know replied to one of his tweets in a way that compared Israel to the Nazis and for some reason she decided to blame Foster for that. Last time I looked, unless you lock your account, you can't stop people replying to you whether you know them or not, and you certainly have no control over what they happen to say. I would not imagine she knows this by now. She's been embarrassed on the former bird side enough times already, much like others who showed up with her, such as her sidekick Rachel Riley, alleged actor Eddie Morrison, serial Labour resigner Maureen Lipman, radio loudmouth Julia Hartley Duda, and her bestie that she got photographed with, Boris Johnson, because he's firmly anti-racist, of course. He's never said anything remotely racist ever, has he? And of course, that infamous anti-racist campaigner and esteemed journalist Stephen Christopher Yaxley Lennon, a.k.a. Tommy Robinson, because you can't have an anti-racist march without one of the well, biggest racists going, apparently. Hey, that's a whole load of white people, by the way, folks. Robinson is massively pro-Israel because he's done extremely well out of pro-Israel interests, particularly the pro-settler movement, funded in part at least by a far-right organisation as it is called ILAD, who are determined to ethnically cleanse Palestine, in effect. They themselves are funded by an array of pro-Israeli interests. Double Down News and Low Key have done excellent work on this, so I won't go too far down this rabbit hole. They've explored the whole Warren. Go watch their stuff on this. But several organisations with connections to Elad also have connections to Robinson. 
Middle East Forum are led by a former employee of the Israeli Ministry of Defense and were quoted 13 times by Norwegian mass killer Anders Breivik. They funded the free Tommy Robinson campaign as well. Another is the Hertog Foundation, which itself funded the David Horowitz Freedom Center, which has employed both Katie Hopkins and Tommy Robinson. They also fund Friends of the IDF. Yes, if you thought Labour Friends of Israel was bad, imagine being a friend of the IDF. And they are also funders of the aforementioned Middle East Forum. Friends of the IDF have on their board a guy called Robert Shulman, and he's, yeah, also funded a certain Tommy Robinson. Functionally, Robinson is up to his eyeballs in pro-Zionist funding, so let's not pretend his presence at the march was anything other than a, well, paid appearance in all effects, in all likelihood. Of course, where Robinson goes, he inevitably calls down the knuckle-draggers who hang on his every word. He called them out to join him on his march. Organisers at the CAA apparently begged him to stay away, but he didn't. And of course, where Robinson goes, the police inevitably get involved somewhere too. Robinson himself getting arrested, as per usual, crying his eyes out yet again, having been instructed by them as well to stay away, thus making the entire affair, the whole march, as much about him as he possibly could. And of course, it would be remiss of me to not point out a sizable Jewish contingent were present, not waving Israeli flags, but they were waving Palestinian ones. It is notable that so often these Jewish groups include members of the Jewish Orthodoxy who get abused by other Jewish groups, and with reports of them having been targeted by some of the other demonstrators, the anti-Semitic vibe of the march was distinctly lacking amongst some, clearly, when you can go on, well, go on an anti-Semitism march and attack Jewish people whilst you're at it. I mean, what? Marching against racism is great and good and just and is what every one of us uh, normal right-thinking people would do when it is truly that which you are marching for. And there will have been many there marching for the genuine article of that, I am sure. But when they have not been the focus, then another agenda has been at play. This march at the weekend was a stunt organised by people who weaponised the issue, not who fight it. Too many there for Israel, who were marching for genocide instead of against racism. And I would imagine the next pro-Palestine demo in London will be even bigger as a result of this, just to hammer that point home. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. More content out daily. Please do have your say on this story in the comments below and be part of the conversation as ever. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation with the BBC. Yes, let's come back to them again. Last month, they were playing down the pro-Palestine protests as if they were somehow less important, whilst also playing the anti-Semitism card as they did so. Utterly shameless conduct. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.